teachers. If you haven't been to it, go. This is the place to be if you want to have teachers' opinions on different things. Read, write, think .org, okay? Principle number four, the brain is highly plastic. What is neuroplasticity again? Is it an ability or? Oh, be before, before? Oh, you want me to go back? Okay. Yeah. Yes, the blue, right? Yes, readwritethink.org. But it will be all available to you, okay? Don't worry, it will be. Can you read? Can you read? Yes? yes? Okay, good. Um, the brain is highly plastic. What is plasticity again? Okay, let's stop there. An ability or a property? It's a property. Yes. An ability is something that I have to do something to acquire, right? Ability to ride a bicycle, to swim. That is, I have to engage, I have to make some effort. P plasticity, no. Plasticity comes with me. I use it for good things, I use it for bad things. Okay, so the brain is highly plastic. What do we, can we do to capitalize on that? Students want to correspond to your expectations and their expectations as well. This is part of our these mechanisms that is embedded in us. We are social human beings. We need each other. We need, yes. We feed on that. If you have observed babies, if you had the opportunity to raise a child, you know what I'm talking about. From birth, we look up to the adults around us and we want the... From birth, we are wired for that. Have you ever heard of the Pygmalion effect? Pygmalion effect. It's a Greek myth. Pygmalion was a sculpture. Once he sculptured a beautiful lady in stone. He fell in love with the lady. She was so beautiful. The gods took pity on Pygmalion and conceded life to the statue. The statue became the wife he wanted her to be. That's why in education, we say that students correspond to the expectations we have for them. Yes, my um, fair lady with Hepburn. Yes, it's a very famous effect, very well explored in culture. But in learning, yes, we have lots of studies proving once and over again the importance of holding high expectations to your students. And then again, let's think about expectations. Is it feasible as a language teacher to say your name is? Alessandra. Alessandra, do you know German? No. I know German. I can teach you in three months and I know you will learn. Is it feasible to have such an expectation? So, deal well with your expectations. I'm saying hi, but I'm saying realistic expectations. Poor her. I have been trying for years. I once will get there and be a Deutsch speaker. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it is not easy. And expectations have us all to consider and reconsider what is realistic and what is not. It starts with us. 
we have to think about that. And then we have to say, you can do more and you can do better. And I trust you and I'm here to go with you. Hold and stay. Learning is, mu is made much easier when it's a road taken together. Okay? You will remember this afternoon <laughs> with the brain <laughs> and we melting here. <laughs> I will ask for a fan if they have. Okay. And now a question to you. What's your take on intelligence? How do you see intelligence? I, I'll give you half a minute for you to think. What? what? I will explain. I'm not crazy. I just want you to consider where do you stand about intelligence? Do I think that a person with an IQ of 150 Genius. Nobody can hold with that kind of mind. <gasps> what a blessing. I wasn't born with 150. Poor me. I, I'm, not, I'm a regular 100. So where do I stand? This is the kind of thing that I want you to be able to do now. Where do you stand? Do you believe in IQ? Do you believe that you have such or such type of intelligence? What do you believe in when I tell you, What's your take on intelligence? Half a minute for you to put your thoughts together and for me to ask for a fan. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Did you gather your thoughts? Okay. What's your take on intelligence? We don't have just one. No, no problem. Please shut out. Okay, you have many. You are all all for Howard Gardner's nine intelligences. Good. What else? Do we have a number? Do we have a number? IQ? No. No. Okay. Good. Can we progress in our intelligence? Good, okay, now we're talking. All right, is our intelligence fixed? No. no. What does it? I read the book. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, Marmalade. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so there are two things that we have to know about intelligence. Mm. This is a great hook for everyone, food. Never under, undermine the importance of food. Yes, yes, that's why. Guys, we have two basic types of intelligence. When we talk about intelligence in general terms, what is fluid, what is fixed? Many people, IQ tests, BNA, and all the, the <laughs> industry of intelligence tests that develop from there considers intelligence as a construct that can be measured and so it's fixed. I am one meter 67 tall. My intelligence, you see? You measure, tests, you standard, you deliver, that's your intelligence. And there is another body of knowledge that knows today that our intelligence are fluid. They develop as we are immersed in context that pulls us to deliver on that, to develop that other side, to be more creative, artistic, sport-like, whatever we want. Because intelligence is just like our brains. The more you develop, the more you have of capacity. Okay. Okay. I am 310. We are three and a half. Okay. I will leave this for you to watch. It is a study that uh, is a, on an educational perspective how Pygmalion effect takes place. It describes this study of a teacher who was described with, look, there are five students in your class who are genius. 
trust them, they are great. They were nothing different from the rest of her class. But from the start, she placed them in such high expectations that at the end of the term, what happened? Who were best? You guys. Who made the difference? Teachers' expectations. This is in the video for you. Okay. Principle number five, the house. How do we start with knowledge? Prior knowledge. We all have our schemata. What we have learned previously, hearing, seeing, adapting, that we connect and put forward. So we start from the basis. We connect new to old information. Okay, good. The house. Have ever heard of ThingLink? No? Okay. I have to show you this because this is so amazing. Learning must make sense, okay? It must resonate with me, with you, so that I follow you. And be based upon learner's elaboration. Piaget was right. Montessori dead right. We have to learn to let students actively engage. I'm not only talking about physical. You are all engaged here and your minds are here working, trying to process. This is engagement. Okay? Yes. Let's hear, look and see. I hope it goes. Okay, ThingLink is a place, again, free. This, is, this resource lets you pull a picture, pull a video, start on a canvas, and based on that, the logo for my site. Based on that, you go there and you insert information that is important, that you want people to know, that you know people probably don't. And here, another that you know and people don't. And when you click on that, it takes you to that site, to that content, to that piece of information. Can you see the potential it has for uh, learners to connect new to old information? They can pick whatever they want online and they are going to draw their own connections about what they know of that picture that connects to that concept. Okay, think link for you. Now I have to go back. Let me see here. Okay. Freshness. Can you feel it? It's coming, guys. It will be with you. Principle number six. Learning equals attention and memory. Again, it's a simple equation just for us active players in this process. Remember that if we don't engage students' attention, if we don't count on the memory processes, and this I'm talking about load, this I'm talking how I regulate my position, how I use my voice, the kind of words that I'm going to repeat all over again, because those words are important for the kinds of ideas and concepts you are memorizing, I don't get to learning. As simple as that. Or have, do you, can you say that you have learned everything that you've been exposed to? No, but I will give you another percentage. <laughs> Amazing. Nine, a hundred percent of incoming stimuli, okay? Incoming. Input, input, input. How much do you think of all this input we are processing? Ten? Two? One percent. 
Oh, Gazenica said that to us. Michael Gazenica was one of the Nobel nominees on the neuroscience of cognition. In 1999, what? I'm talking about perceptual learning, okay? What you perceive, perception, of everything that is around here. I am able to process 1%. Thank you. <laughs> That's why, guys, teachers <laughs> don't spoil <laughs> my book spoiler. <laughs> no, guys, really, be the center of attention because students are processing you. When it is a moment for you to engage, for you to make a point, you are there attention has to be with you. This is working with our brains. Other moments, students will be in circles, students will be alone, students will be on their WhatsApp and whatever. No problem. But that single moment, you want that idea to be, create, and really make that episode something memorable. This is how we perceive. Okay, guys. So, knowing that we need attention, knowing that we need memory, how can we make and conjure all that with students that read and write? Literate, okay? For illiteracy, we have a whole set of strategies. When the brain learns to read, and later write, it is never going to be the same brain that it was before. R learning to read reconfigures the brain, the brain circuitry, like no other action learned by the human brain. Did you know that? And we all read, right? Yes. And right. Yes. So again, if you want to fight off cognitive decline, what do you do? Chinese, Japanese, Arabic. Why not? Please use this organ was made to be active, not inactive. Okay, have you ever heard of Padlet? Yes. yes, very good. Padlet capitalizes on note taking. Why? Because note taking uses writing in its ability of refining, summarizing, synthesizing information. When we write, for example, notes of a lecture, what you are doing in your brain? Let's gross, grossly elaborate here. Yes, you want to aid your memory in remembering. Very good. But you are there, listening. The person is there. And what is your brain doing? Are you writing everything? So look at this capital ability that we develop when we write with comprehension and for purposes, okay? I'm not just scribbling on paper, note taken. So I am there. I am processing what this, this person is telling me, creating this abstract notion and I'm following the line of thought and I'm paying attention visually and I'm recruiting in my mind, making notes of what is most important and I'm putting it in fine motor skills within paper in a language that has a code. Wow. You see why you have to capitalize on writing? Did you like it? <laughs> Guys, writing is gold maker students write. Students today don't like to write? Yes, of course, it is such troublesome hard labor, isn't it? 
we all are language teachers. We have all dealt with that. But today, technology helps us. If you go to a tool like that, first, there is no corrector. Yes! Pay attention to what you write. If you spell wrong, it will be wrong. If you write incoherently, nobody can understand and give feedback and like your Padlet. They don't want that. They want people. It's like Facebook. <laughs> like, everybody has to have a like. But guys, we have to use that intelligently. The situation is created. How can we do the best with the lemons, right? This is the situation here. This tool, purposefully, is not with a corrector. So the guys who built that knew that we have to review, we have to revise our writing, we have to edit. And those are skills that are learned. They are perfected. Use it. And if they go to a Word doc, it's yeah. beautifully spelt. There are even words that you said, really? No, he could have used that. No. Of course. The, the, the dictionary is there all giving all those beautiful words that the guy doesn't even know what it means, but he uses. So yes, right. And we yeah. have. Oh, yes, 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 like uh, to repeat things. I forgot the name. What is important here? Again, guys, as I said, I'm a fan because the guys know that we all have to connect. So you write a note. That's the padlet, the, the, the note. And we, you connect content from the net. You embed a video. You embed uh, a site. You embed a photo, whatever but you have to make meaning. And when you develop a Padlet that is for the class, for example, you make a Padlet that is a canvas. They have to connect the Padlets. That is, I write a note, but you, Leandro, has to write a note that responds to mine, and you draw the line. The guys were good, right? <laughs> make good use of it. Verification and time. OK. I'm sorry. Why? Because we are able to deliver half of the presentation. But if Giselle has me for another half, and if you want me to be talking, joining forces with you on the break, I come for the other half. Six neural myths. But what, whatever we do in life, guys, it can't be rushed. Our brains don't work on that. If you have the audience, if you have people who are learning well with you, take the time. Capitalize on it. Be here, held, attention held, memory made. This is learning. It's not about me following up <laughs> script. It's about you processing together what we have. Okay? So, verification of your learning. On the left corner, I have the principles of my brain education. Double up with best practices. What I would like you to do now is to take a, mo a moment individually to read the principles on the left, read the best practices on the right. You don't need your note taking, okay? You may even look at your notes, no problem, but try to see if it makes sense and connect the principle to what makes sense in terms of practice. When you have done that individually, I would like you to find someone to share. That is, you are going to connect and see. Bateu, voltou. Very good. Oh. <laughs> OK. What I understood, you understood too. Very nice. We are building together. And then we are going to come. OK. Sounds good. Mister, if you want to see better, Stand up. It's time for you to stand up and come join me here. Movement is good. Yes, come and read. 
come and read, guys, and think for yourself, please. Now is the time that you can stand up and come exercise. and exercise. Yes, this is important. <laughs> okay. My time for water. Come here and read. And read, you guys at, at the back having problem? This is really hot. Be careful, okay? Ah, oh, yes. You are like me. You, are, you, you like warmth and nearness. Do we read this side? Yes. Yeah, and you have to. This is jumbled up. On the left, it's all mixed. You have to put in the right order but to match the best practices that follow the chronological order that I followed here, okay? Good? Whenever you're good, raise your hand, find a, find a pair. Oh, but this is good, this is nice. Thank you. Yes, great idea. I'll try to bring one. Thank you. Okay. Whenever you feel that you're ready, you can start sharing. Good. Okay, some answers? Hmm? Yes, whenever you feel you can start sharing. Okay, your name okay. is? Fabiola. Are you okay now? I am good, it's because I went to Santa Fe Gym. Yes. Okay. Came straight from Santa Fe Gym. And I had like this. Wow. You're <laughs> happy. No, yes. But, but yes. Sure. Like, yeah. good. You kept my attention, it's Thank the best. You. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, my. Is this the idea? For example, number one is the second one on the right. Excuse me, can you is repeat this that? The idea? Number one yes. at the bottom is the second one on the right. And so on. that's yes. the idea. Yes, that's the idea. That's the idea. Very good. Okay, now is the time. Please share. Share because you're going to have some feedback soon. You can use them all the same. Yeah. Joshua Ford, a moonwalking with Einstein, memory. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. that's nice. And Daniel Seguil, the okay. mind. Okay, <laughs> okay, good reading. Huh? Very interesting. Okay. All right, can I interrupt you? Good. We are almost um, close to our coffee break. We all need our air, right? Our next speaker is here. Hello, Renata. Nice to see you. you. You'll feel a lot of air because the air conditioner here is not working, so we all need our breath. Okay. Feedback. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, in fact, as Mr. Your name, sir? Michael said, Mirella, everything can be with everything else. Yes, thank you for that. But in fact, what I proposed to you was this order. Principle number one, which is brain is unique. Use variation transdisciplinarity. Principle number two, context and ability shape our learning. So manage the learning at the individual level. Principle number two, the brain changes with experience. If it changes with experience, give quality feedback. Upgrade the experience. Principle number four, the brain is highly plastic. If it's highly plastic, remember Pygmalion, students want to correspond to your expectations in their expectations as well. Capitalize on it. Principle number four, we five, 
we have to connect new to old information. If we have to connect, promote and invest in active construction. Remember, think link. Principle number six, learning equation. For learning, we need and thank you. Develop students' ability to take notes and summarize. That's when you are capitalizing on the memory processes and attention. Questions? Comments? Ideas? Yes, my book is this. Yes, thank you. The cards are here, accessible through this link. Remember, it is interactive. So the content is video, feedback, comments together, posts, whatever. Thank you so much. References are at the end. It was a great pleasure to be here with you today.